sure hard work pushing all that cattle up into that high country. That water sure does look good, too. I can't all the weight wash off some of this grit. <laughs> Careful, little Joe. That's the closest you've come to taking a bath in months. Never mind who I am. Just get off my land. Your land? Now, what are you talking about, mister? You know what I'm talking about. You ain't deep, are you? Well, no, we ain't deep, but are you sure you ain't got just a little bit too much sunshine, old timer? Uh, look, well, maybe you got a... kind of got your directions mixed up. <laughs> All right, now, don't anybody move. What do you want to go do a thing like that for, old timer? I know my rights. The law says that I can shoot trespassers on sight. <laughs> look, you're, you're on the Ponderosa. I bought this land, mister, and there ain't nobody going to take it away from me. Bought it? Anybody, but I will if you push me. Nobody's trying to push you, mister, but what makes you think this land is yours? I said I bought it. Twenty-five dollars, hard money. I got the bill of sale to prove it. I hereby sell you all the land between the east shore of Lake Tahoe and Sun Mountain for twenty-five dollars cash. Signed, Henry T.P. Comstock. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Comstock. Old timer, I guess you were just one of the many who were taken in by our dear friend, Mr. Comstock. I guess you didn't know him any too well, did you? I don't have to know him. I got the bill of sale there to prove it. The bill of sale? I know thief is selling the territory in Nevada if he could get away with it. <laughs> Looks like he did, too. You remember the first time we ever seen him, little Joe? Oh, that wild-eyed old mule of his? <laughs> yeah. That black stove pipe hat that made him look pious as a preacher. <laughs> you know how many men have draped this tree? 28 men and one woman. We figured to make it a nice round figure, like 30. All right, let's get it over with. Whoa, whoa! What the name of creation's your hurry? Mind if I have a last word with my friend? Friend? You haven't got a friend within 50 miles of Hangtown. Lord, I... I'm ready whenever you say the word, but Lord, I... I hope you'll forgive me if I... If I don't have time to tell these boys about the big new movement going on around here. What in thunder big movement you talking about? Change the name of Hangtown to Placerville. You boys hear of any such goings on around here? Lord, looks like you left these boys up in the hills too long. You know the first law they passed was there'd be no more hangings within the city limits. City limits, how far are they? Clear to the top of the Sierra Nevada mountains. That's a good hundred miles. Mighty ambitious town, Placerville. Lord, you didn't tell these boys nothing. You didn't tell them there's mighty touchy people around here, too. Especially about any unnecessary hanging. Hanging you is about the most necessary thing a hard rock miner could ever do. So we'll escort you the 100 miles over the Sierra Nevada and hang you there. I thank you. Because, Mr. Henry T.P. Comstock, you're about the crookedest, slimiest, most double-dealing, weaseling, lying, thieving, no-good claim jumper that ever hit the state of California.
Well, it took four hours to bring that thing down. <laughs> that isn't such a long time, little Joe. That one, it took 400 years for it to grow. 400 years? Well, that was even before Columbus sailed out of Spain to discover America. Us. There were trees that were living and growing in this forest. They were old when Christ pulled fish out of the Sea of Galilee. Don't cut unless you plant. That's right, Horse. That's why we're here. Not just to take from the land, but to give. Yes, sir. You see it? A hundred years from now, standing tall against the sky. Plant it, Adam. Sure, Paul. Well, little Ponderosa, see you around in a couple of hundred years when you're a big Ponderosa. Thousands of people who one day will come to this land Mighty thankful for what we've done. There's timber up there to build whole new cities. Launch fleets of ships. Hear that, horse? Older brother Adam is planning to build that Yankee fleet of his again. Yeah, well, it's going to take a mite more water than we got here about to float it in, little Joe. Water? Oh, now, you don't think Adam is planning to sail his ships on just plain old water, do you? I guess you two mountain boys haven't heard. Just so happens I'm planning on ships that sail across sand. Mm. <laughs> I remember walking across about 600 miles of it the last time Paul sent me to Salt Lake City to file in claim papers. How would you like to be able to do it in under three days? Oh, come <laughs> on now. From here to Salt Lake City in three days? How are you going to do that? I think he's going to fly <laughs> through the air, or <laughs> Maybe two days. Oh, well, maybe one day. <laughs> you talking about a railroad, son? I'd be talking about a railroad, Pa. Dreams are mighty good things to have, son. You know what it takes to build a railroad? Track. Track that runs across sand, round mountains, and over rivers. And track ain't nothing but a lot of rail and a bed of ties to lay it on. You cut down all these wonderful trees to provide ties for a railroad? I'd cut them down, Pa. And I'd put new ones in their place. Hey, that sounded like a rifle shot. On the California side, it sounded to me like it come off the Ponderosa. Dorothy, if you don't move faster, you're going to be key with us, so I'm hanging. So he thinks he can sneak away on that old mule. Yeah. How do you feel about four men chasing one man on a mule? Well, maybe they have a reason for chasing him. I don't care for the odds. We sure could improve them, Paul. We sure could sweeten them up some at that, Paul. Uh, yeah, we better stop them, too, before they stir up the Paiutes. Well, last time somebody stirred them up, three families of settlers paid for it with their lives. All right, boys, let's sweeten them. How far over you reckon them fellas are? About a half a mile, maybe. Yeah. It's just about what I figured. Hey, horse, even with that Sharps Buffalo gun you got, you don't figure you can hit a target at half mile distance. You watch that fella's hat. Dorothy, 
That shot come from the direction I thought it did? Ah. Boss, let me see that little old squirrel gun of yours for a minute. Sure, Adam. See that, Paul? Couldn't become stock. He didn't even have a rifle. And little Joe, what was all this talk about a half a mile? Good you. You want to try it, little Joe? Yeah, I better. You uh, right sure now? Well, I think I better if I want to stay living with this family. It's a mighty fine old gun you got there, huh? Mighty good shooting. That's just kind of thing any New Orleans boy learns to do by the time he learns to walk. Take a crack at it, Paul. Well, if I have to, just to show you young whippersnappers. Go ahead, you can't miss now. Give me that rifle. Mighty fine, Chief. We gotta get out of here, Hector. They made men, they're devils. Where are they shooting from? That's what I want to know. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's the best darn shooting I ever saw. Good shooting, all right, but it's done by men like us, not devils. Thank you for looking favorably in the countenance of this miserable sinner, Lord. I sure do appreciate it. I sure do. And to prove it, I won't lie or steal or ever jump any other fellow's claim again as long as I live. Strike me dead if I do, Lord. You strike me dead. Uh, Heck, I don't like this place. Fields haunted me. Why don't we go back to California? Now, let's go that. back. We only came here to get rid of that Comstock fellow in the first place. Not get rid of him. Hang him. I promised myself to see that old thief hang that I mean to keep that promise. Well, I think we scared those fellows off. They're heading back to California. Yeah. Maybe they aren't. Uh, quite an exhibition of skill, my friends. Truly the best exhibition of the fine art of rifle shooting I've ever seen. Uh, since the days of that esteemed gentleman, Quincy P. Strongheart. Ah, uh, yes, I can see it all just as though it were yesterday. My boyhood chum, Quincy P., raised at my side in sight of the stormy and treacherous waters of Lake Nipishama. What in the tarnation you talking about, mister? What'd you do to stir up all that excitement? It's probably one of them claim jumpers they run out of California. Lad, I beseech you. Don't mention that evil place to me. I, Henry T.P. Comstock, who have roamed the four corners of the earth, have sailed every shore and coastline of the seven seas, never want to hear the name of that foul-sounding place again as long as I live. Why will you run out? I? You think I, Henry Comstock, was run out of California? Run out and told never to come back. How many claims did you jump? Did you hear that? Yeah, not you. <laughs> Lord, right where I stand, right where I stand, if I, Henry Comstock, ever jumped, or even thought of jumping any other gold miner's claim, strike me dead. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, Lord. I, I know I'm a miserable sinner, and certain things have been known to cling to my fingers, but I'm not ready yet, Lord, to meet the hellfires of retribution. Not yet, Lord. Not yet. Hellfires of retribution, hear that, little Joe? <laughs> I figure if a man's gonna get religion, he might as well get it in a hurry. <laughs> Mr. Comstock, before your time is up, I think there's room for at least one good meal in there to help uh, see you through that final journey. Do my ears deceive me, or did I... did I hear you mention food? <laughs> well, gentlemen, when do we eat? You too, Dorothy. <laughs> you Dorothy, food, come. Gentlemen, I have feasted at the tables of kings and dined in the company of millionaires, but never, I repeat, never 
Have I enjoyed such a meal as this? This is Hop Singh's doing, Mr. Comstock. In all of your traveling, you ever meet a finer cook? My good man, worthy descendant of Confucius that you might be, I must compliment you on having acquired a skill and wizardry in the culinary arts unmatched in all this land. He no like the lip? <laughs> no, he likes some Hop Singh. Oh, very good. I bring more. Got plenty more. Yeah, you do that, Hop Singh. You do that. <laughs> Mr. Comstock, do you have any late news of my good friend, Captain John Sutter? Sir, you're referring to Captain John Sutter of the Sacramento Valley? Are there any other Captain John Sutters? Huh. Well, the poor man, he's, he's a cause of sadness and melancholy to all of his friends. What's the matter? Is he getting worse? Not only getting worse, he's almost gone. As has his mind. Young man, pass that plate of sweet corn, please. You mean you're still hungry? I haven't seen corn as smooth and golden as this since I was a boy on the shores of Lake Semihushi. I thought you said over on the mountain, uh, Lake Nipishama. Nipishama one side, Semihushi on the other. Lots of lake in that neck of the woods. Hey, well, just what neck of the woods was that? You, um, you boys familiar with foreign lands? Uh, no, no. We've never been out of the country. Why? Oh, it's a shame that you can't know too much about him. Wonderful country of my childhood, Canada. Oh, well, this, uh, Napachki and Scouchy Hiwachi, whatever you call it, are they in Canada? On the other side of the Frangatang Mountains. Mr. Comstock, what about my friend Captain Sutter? Poor man. It's a pity to what's happened to him. You wouldn't recognize him anymore. How bad is he, Mr. Comstock? Not just one more, just a... Small one? Later. In fact, I think we've all had enough to eat for now. Hopsing? Yes, Mr. Cartwright. You like a dinner? Yes, dinner was very good, Hopsing. Very good. Very good, Hopsing, and I do thank you. We'll very a, good. We'll have a coffee. Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Comstock? Brandy? Oh. Yes, don't mind if I do. Thank you, sir. You're very kind. Nice little place you got here. Reminds me of the time I was the guest of Queen Victoria at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> I'll ride on down to the sawmill, Pa. Have him bring those trees in we cut down. Fine, Adam, fine. Oh, Adam, uh, do you need any help? Well, come to think of it, we are a little short-handed. Uh, how would you like to work for us, Mr. Comstock? We pay good money, dollar American a day. Work? What kind of work is that? Oh, hauling, cutting timber. Good, healthy outdoor work from sun up to sundown. Sun up? Oh, I'm afraid that's not the kind of work I do. Just what kind of work do you do, Mr. Comstock? I'd well, be real anxious to know. Yeah, uh, well, I'm a, I'm a merchant. Yes, that's what I am, a merchant. Oh, a merchant. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sometimes I buy, sometimes I sell. It all depends on the state of business, among other things. <laughs> Very good health, sir. <clears throat> among other things, Mr. Comstock, do you ever indulge in something called panning for gold? You mean you folks don't cut into folks who Pan for gold? I told you I planted the first field of grain with John Sutter in the valley of the Sacramento. Together we planted those hillsides with vines, with fruit-bearing trees. You know what they did to that land, those locusts, those ravagers who answered the cry of gold in California? They tore out those vines. They chopped down those trees. They trampled that wheat. Is it any wonder that John Sutter sits on his porch now, staring into the sun by the hour, Recognizing no one, seeing nothing. You know about him, don't you? I know all about him. And that's why I came to the Ponderosa, my sons and I. And that's why I made my vow that never would these thousand square miles of God-made country be delivered into the hands of those spoilers, those destroyers. Mr. Comstock. If I so much as see a man digging for gold anywhere on my land, I'll shoot him at sight. Gold? You don't mean there's gold up here in western Utah, do you? Well, that's what we keep telling those fellers over at Washoe Diggins, Mr. Comstock, that they're just wasting their time. There ain't enough gold over there to fool with. Hey, you think they'd listen to us? I don't know what there is about a gold miner. I think they must be three-fourths loco and the other-fourths stupid. <laughs> you said they found gold? What I said was that they didn't hardly find enough to fool with. 
Yeah, they pan all day, come up with just about enough by themselves a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> now, if you were a whiskey merchant, Mr. Comstock, you should do rather well down at Washoe. Washoe? That's the name of the place, huh? Mm. Washoe. That's what they call it. 20 miles due east of the Ponderosa. Where are you going, Mr. Comstock? Then it was fine, gentlemen. I hate to rush, but duty calls. Duty? What kind of duty? It was miners at Washoe. They're just waiting to buy and sell. Farewell, gentlemen. <laughs> Fool. The gold-crazed fool. Oh. Hmm. Maybe I'll follow him. Those fellows from California might still be after him, be trying to kill him. Uh, probably for good cause, Huss. Now, I thought you worried about four-legged animals. Well, I, I reckon he's sort of like a four-legged animal himself. You might say like a jackass. <laughs> hey, hey, can I go too, Pa? Every Saturday night there's a dance on a Dutch piece at the diggings. A dance? Or do they have any women to dance with? Yeah, they got two or three. They're pretty big. So some gals that do the miners washing. You ought to see them, Paul. They're big and raw bones as Texas steers, but they can dance. <laughs> well, Western Utah's grown up. All right, uh, Hoss, you go after our friend the fool, and uh, little Joe, and you uh, go off the Dutch beats to your dance. Adam, what about you? What do you want? Hey, come on with us, Adam. No, I don't want anything, Paul. I got work to do. But uh, little Joe, I might just drop by and take a look at one of those uh, big raw bone women. Hey, why don't you do that, Adam? As a matter of fact, I'll save one for you. The biggest and rawest of the bunch. Yes, I bet you will. <laughs> Boy, I sure would like to surprise him with a pretty little gal. There ain't no pretty gals in a hundred miles here, little Joe. Hey, but I'm just thinking about one. Just one. Paul, you sure his ma wasn't part jackrabbit? Us. His ma was all woman. So was Adam's. So was yours. They left me sons, boy. They left me sons. Beggar man, thief. Which one do you think he is, Hoss? I reckon he's most likely been nearly all of them at one time or another, little Joe. Still think those fellas from California might be after him? I don't know. If they are, he's gonna need some mighty fast help. Yeah, maybe so. But I got a real strange feeling that old crowbait can take care of just about anything that comes along. Party. I guess the good Lord watches over fools and little children. Well, just in case the good Lord forgets for a minute, I think I'd better trail along after him and keep an eye on for trouble. I'll see you at the diggings tonight. You be sure and save me some of that tarantula juice, you hear? Now, when I get to the diggings, I ain't gonna have time for any tarantula juice. You stay out of that piled country. You remember what Paul said about stirring him up? Horse? What the heck would I want with any old Paiute?
hurt yourself? Nothing up it, my boy. Nothing at all. We Comstocks are made of steel. <clears throat> yes, I can remember my grandpappy, the ripe age of 93. Chewing iron bars and spitting out nails. Yeah, I, I reckon you're all right at that. <laughs> well, the way you fell back there, I could have sworn you broke something. Son, you're looking at a man who did break something. He's linked with a past. How long has all this been going on? Well, a feller's been fooling around these mountains for years. Digging up one side and then down the other. Fighting that blue stuff over there, they call it. Blue stuff? Never heard of it. What's that? Well, I don't reckon anybody rightly knows. Something that gums up something fierce. Makes it hard to get at the gold. Gold. Yeah, the gold. Like the sound of that word, son. It's like music to my ears. Yes, sir. From now on, I intend to confine all my valuable time to the Comstock load. The Comstock load? What's that? Everything that meets the eye, son. Everything that meets the eye. You just got here. How can you even think about naming all this after yourself when you only just got here? Son, that just goes to show you how wrong a man can be. Because I got the feeling that I've been here practically all of my life. Greetings, gentlemen. Henry T. P. Comstock brings you greetings and salutations. Did, uh, did you gentlemen file a legal claim for this particular piece of land? A legal claim? Now, what kind of a question is that? Uh, simple enough question, friend. You didn't file a claim, you're trespassing to my property. I'm requesting you to move on. Oh, well, Mr. Comstock, you can't do a thing like that. You only just got here. Son, the law's the law. The law says if a man don't file a claim, he ain't got any more right than a tinker. Now, you wait a minute. You just wait a minute. We filed a claim more than a month ago. Up at Dutch Pete's, we did it. Dutch Pete's? Sounds like a purveyor of the old evil eye. Now, if you file this claim in a legal-like courthouse... Dutch Pete's legal-like courthouse is good enough for us, mister. And give me back that pan. Is this a private conversation, friend, or could you use a little company? Where'd you come from? I'll ask the question, friend. How big a claim you got here? Uh, clear to the head of the mountain. And all of it ain't words I... Don't say it. Think it, but don't say it. Quite a good-sized claim. How much gold? Gold? Say gold? I tell you, mister, there ain't nothing around here but this dang blue stuff. Loud. How'd you like to have yourself a partner? Partner? In what? Your claim, friend. <laughs> Clear to the top of the mountain. Anyone will do, I'll give you... I'll give you 20... Uh, $17 American. $17? What? But I tell you, mister, all this dang blue stuff ain't worth a nickel. Seventeen dollars, my good man. It's my final offer. Well, I'll take it, Mister. <laughs> mister, huh? you just bought yourself into half of this claim. Seventeen dollars, huh? Uh, wait till I tell this to the boys at Dutch Pete's tonight. <laughs> Partner, there's something else you're gonna do at Dutch Pete's tonight too. Now, at properly arranged time. I want you to break. You, you follow me, friend? <laughs> 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 You brave man, you ride into Paiute village alone. Uh, Chief Winnemuck, I believe you know my father, Ben Cartwright. I know, Father. I think you know me, too, and my brothers, Horace and Adam. Matter of fact, Chief, didn't you, uh, didn't you trade Pa this pinto pony for a buffalo gun? You're from high up on mountain. Why you come here? Well, I brought you a little present, Chief. Pretty nice color, wouldn't you say? You bring this for me? Hey, well, not exactly. It's for your daughter. When you see Saratucci? Hey, it was just a little while back down at the river. She's taking a bath. Hey, now, hold it, Chief. She's more than a mile away. Just one of many women. A knife.
Other women, uh, much big, plenty fat. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know, Chief. Uh, I didn't look at the other women. And what about this material? Got it from a peddler across the mountains from Sacramento. Said it was genuine silk. Not very strong, not much good. Yeah, well, Chief, it's for a dress, not a horse blanket. Hmm. Saratucci! like a real princess, ma'am. What do you think, Chief? Hmm. Sure fine tasting meat, Chief. What is it? Rattlesnake. It's really very good. We have a lot. You eat more. Well, no thanks, Chief. I'm not a very big eater. How about showing me that Appaloosa horse you were trying to sell me? I bring horse. You eat more. Very good. Well, sure, Chief. Oh, please, no thank you, ma'am. I'm not a very big eater. Hey, uh, you know how to make this into a dress? Into a dress? Yeah, look. See, see what I mean here? Now, uh... Yeah, well, look, now, it doesn't look too good on me. Look, you try it. Sort of, uh... Hey, you do it. That's it. That's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting the idea, Princess? Yeah, that looks nice. And now, listen, there's a... There's a dance down at the Washout Diggins. A dance? You don't know dance. Look, a dance. Dance, da, da, dance, dance. There, you know? You like to dance? Yeah, well, good, so do I. Now, listen, don't tell Chiefy, all right? Yeah, good, because he'd scalp me if he knew what I had in mind. Now, you meet me where the river meets the meadow, just beyond the waterfall. And then, Princess, you and I are going to have ourselves a dance. That's what I call a horse. Pretty well known fact hereabouts. You drunken coach! You don't even know where Virginia is. <laughs> <laughs> the old Dominion, sir. The fairest of all the 35 states. Land where I was born, sir. Born and bred. And been soaking up to your teeth in corn liquor ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're from Virginia. The That's old wonderful. Dominion, sir, the fairest. You wouldn't I... say that, friend. You ever seen the sun set on Lake Tomahawker? Oh, that's a pretty like. Where'd you get the girl, son? The girl? Hey, she's a real looker. Oh, well, Princess <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Gentlemen. Princess. Gentlemen and ladies. I'd, I'd like to present to you the Princess Sarah Tucci. Princess Sarah for short. Daughter of Chief Winnemucca of our friendly neighbors, the Paiutes. Oh, sir. 
Do I understand you to mean you were reckless enough to take this Paiute gal away from her kinfolk and bring her here? <laughs> Excuse me, I just remembered I ordered a drink. Paiute's a silly young fool. Innkeeper, give me a... a... No, no, oh, never mind. <laughs> Remember what Paul said about him stirring up them Paiutes? Well, little brother. What you mean about stirring up the Paiutes, and what I mean about stirring up the Paiutes, is two entirely different stirring ups. Princess, may I have the next dance? Pardon me, ma'am. Bye, well, everybody. Grab your partner. We're going to do the Virginia Reel. Now forward again, left elbow swing all the way back, place again. Forward, turn your bed, brand new. Chicken up, yo. And a yo, she do. You want to be a little dough? Pat, why can you use a skunk? Yeah! Hey, come stuck right! See the look at boy! <laughs> because I prefer the boy to win the tuna and brother in the beef! <laughs> Yes, yes. I'll tell you, Hoss, I hurt my leg in the war of Lake Montebago. Well, how about one with me? Yeah, oh, with you? Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> Excuse us. <laughs> yeah, let her go, Hoss. Son, I'll trade you Jenny here and throw in five ounces of gold dust. Anytime you want to switch partners. Princess, you sure are beautiful. No, you really are. I don't know if this has ever happened to you before, ma'am, but you're so darn pretty. You take Salatucci away. Well, I didn't exactly take her away, Chief. I, uh, I just asked her to go to a dance with me. What you do? You call this dance? I, I guess I did get a little carried away, Chief, but uh, she's a mighty pretty girl. She pirate girl. She marry him. Lean knife. Ah, well, congratulations, friend. Haven't been to a wedding for a long time. <laughs> You know, I had an uncle once, Uncle Jonah. Not the one who got himself swallowed by the whale. No, sir, he's a different fellow entirely. He's my mother's brother. One that never did a day's lick of work in his life. Did manage to get himself married, though, seven different times. <laughs> Mr. Comstock. Yeah? I think you've done enough talking for one night. Well, I ain't had a chance to kiss the bride yet. <laughs> <laughs> My son seek no trouble with the Paiutes, Chief Wadamaka. That one is young, foolish. He will be punished if he's done anything wrong. But he will be punished by me, not by anyone else. He is your son. Yes, Chief. And she is your daughter. Take her home. You know, the thing I like about you younger brothers, you don't care how big a mess you get yourself into as long as someone else gets you out of it. Have yeah, you know something, older brother? I just knew you'd be here in time. Just in time to march you back home. I get to... Now, wait a minute, Paul. We can't go yet. Adam here ain't even had a dance. Now, where'd that old big fat gal go to? 
Why, you horse-faced, spindle-legged old sidewinder, I said, I was the one buying the lady a drink. If someone want a bath, friend, I'll arrange to have you talk at me. Innkeeper, pour this young lady's shot. Don't you touch that, ma'am. That stuff will poison you. Bartender, pour the little lady a drink of your best whiskey, the kind that we drink down in Virginia. My dear young lady, I've traveled the four corners of the earth, sailed the seven seas. I'm here to tell you the swell they drink in Virginia will ride a skunk's gut. Ma'am, <coughs> what I like about you, you sure drink whiskey like a lady. Adam, I know she's a little bit on the heavy side, but every bit of her show can dance. Fiddler, this is Saturday night. Let's have a little music. <laughs> A ledge 50 foot wide, a solid ledge of gold. Raise your bonanza! Where, Pi? Where? Where? Pike! We are friends and we tell you where it is. <laughs> Up Six Mile Canyon, head of the mountain, you dash go! What's this? I hate to break your hearts, but all that gold out there, all that big strike, that's all of my land. Every bit of it's on my land. Your land? Yeah. When'd you stake a claim to it? This afternoon, friend. Ask my partner there, Mr. Pike. We're gonna call it the Comstock Lou. Is that true, Pike? You sell this old horse thief part of your claim? Now, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Show you what kind of a guy Henry T.P. Comstock is. I'm going to cut each and every one of you in on a fabulous Comstock load for $100 a piece American. Cash on the barrel head. <laughs> it's all right, friend. It's all right. But it's gold. I really found gold. Your friend, we'll talk about it later. It's gold, can't you see? It's gold. Yes, I said. Hey, it is gold. It's really gold. It's the richest I've ever seen in here. I just given it away. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. <laughs> Now you hear it? Now you get out of the way. Follow me, man. I'll show you where the richest part is. Let's Don't, go. Go. Don't forget the best friend and partner you ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Let me pack, wait for you. Yeah, I'll wait Jenny. for all the Jimmy. Oh. Just so it won't be a total loss. I hereby baptize this place, Virginia! Yeah! That's not the way to do it, boys. Oh, shut up, you are. Oh, no, no, this is going to be a great place someday. Fortunes will be made here. Yeah! Yeah! We'll make fortunes so great, we're going to need help counting our money. Yeah! So it ought to have a fitting name. Shouldn't just call it Virginia. We ought to call it, uh, Virginia City. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, look who just showed up. Did you hear him? They found gold. Yeah, I hear him. Those are the guys after Mr. Comstock. They're not even thinking of Henry Comstock now. They're thinking of only one thing, gold. <laughs> Boys. 
your men. You don't even feel like going with them. So do I, little Joe. It's funny what gold do to a man, ain't it? I saw what it did to John Sutter's dream in the Valley of Sacramento. Let's go home. Well, there you have it. The story of Henry T.P. Comstock. <laughs> he sure fooled everybody here, didn't he? Yeah, he did. But I guess most of all, he fooled himself. That clay he jumped. You know, they've taken millions of dollars worth of pure silver out of there. And would you believe it? Old Henry sold that claim for, what, $11,000. <laughs> Hearing that, I don't feel so bad about that worthless piece of paper there. Worthless? Well, I, uh, I wouldn't say it's exactly worthless. So you paid uh, $25 hard money for it. What do you say, boys? Don't you think it'd be worth $25 to have a memento of our dear departed friend? You know, I bet that old crow bait's still jumping claims. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, old timer. $25 and a little more. Well, thank you kindly. <laughs> Let's go, boys. Take it easy, old timer. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you, old timer. Yeah.